we are missing one of the speakers who will be joining in a few minutes. He's in the US and he will do the impossible to, to connect Sergio, but two of the other speakers are present. So without any further ado, this panel in particular has the purpose of targeting a debate that is key, which is energy transition, oil dependence, dilution of lithium, and the false transitions of the ideological proposals of capitalism, of green capitalism. For that, we invite on the one side, Richard Mofulguera. He is an investigator of the CONICET of Argentina. Also, he is biologist and philosopher. He is an intellectual and scientist of the COS. It's very important for a big part of this panel. We also invite Parada. He is philosopher and he's a reference of the environmental movement in Chile. He is very well known for human rights struggle in Chile. So if you agree and you're in conditions to, to do so, Camilo and Guillermo, Guille, do you want to start? Let me activate your audio. Well, thank you, Mariano. Thank you also, Camilo, and the rest of the comrades. We're connected. I'm very thankful for this. I'm not in Buenos Aires. I live in Buenos Aires. We are in the south in Ushuaia, close to Chile. So I salute Camilo. In 15 minutes, I wanted to give some points. If you also need it, we can expand on it, some of these perceptions. In particular, when I was invited, I said, well, let's talk about lithium. And let's talk about lithium in a context that is national in those terms, which is very impactful with a rebellion in Jujuy. And in a general context also, the third rebellion in five years against the police, which is not a, a topic that we cannot evade. We cannot say that people are asleep. If we call this a revolution or whatever we call it, there is a level of riot that we haven't seen before in our country. It's very important to understand. Entire provinces rebelling for equity and social justice and also water which is the intervention that I want to, to make. For those who are connected that are not in Argentina, in Argentina, there are over 50 projects in different instances, or 60, of lithium extraction. You know, an ex-governor of one of the provinces, he said that the the, the mountains have to be a cheese. And also Massa, the candidate for president, also said that the, the mountain chain is a cake. But what we must understand is that where 50 or 60 projects, there are some projects in particular that are on the works right now, that are close to be completed. Those who are on the works have to do with the salt flat of Hombre Muerto in Catamarca and Salta, which is a project that is very old in Argentina, almost half a century old. Lithium extraction is not new in Argentina. And there were results. They were dreadful. Like in the Antofagasta de la Sierra in Catamarca, which is the consequence of this century of destruction. You know, there is a society that is unequal. Schools don't have gas in a place where low temperatures. The other salt flat is Solaros in Jujuy. And in both cases, there is a monopoly. 
recently there is a link between Guybert, a company, an American company. You must remem remember the general that talk about the importance of literal instruction and also a company that is from Australia. There are more companies. It is a very big project, which is Yesichin, which is a, a Chinese project. I will mention some of these. Also, there is a French one. We were also in Salta with Bosco, which is Korean. So you can understand the geopolitical importance of Argentina in all of this. The lithium project is within the hegemonic speech with, those, with two points. There are governors and businessmen and candidates for president. They talk about energy transition and also climate crisis. All extractivism seem to go after noble goals. But our You know, you know that the, the wheat was for noble purposes, but we will regret this. These are the two pillars that we find and those we have to destroy. It. We have to understand and to dismantle. Energy transition that they present and it was so very reproduced by other people we have to dismantle it. We have to dismantle with the question that in the 60s, Marcuse posed, which was, you know, from Frankfurt Circle, for what and for who? All those. We have to ask for who and for whom? Who is behind the transition? Two cases in Argentina, which are fundamental. We all agree with the Yolik Park. Who will disagree with the Yolik Park? The Olic Park for who? In Puerto Madrid, for example. I will, I will go there shortly. They are building all of these mills for La, La Guar, one of the main exporters of aluminum in the continent. For that, for what? Why do we need Olic Parks? If we don't put the discussion in context of where is energy going? How can we discuss this seriously? Aluar, if I stop there, for those who don't know, is an example of a company made by dictatorships. The dictatorship of Ungania and also Videla. That project consumes the same quantity of energy that the entire province of Córdoba. So for those who are not from the country, the province of Córdoba is one of the most important ones in the country. We need to give a discussion for what and for who. Also solar, solar panels. Who will disagree on solar panels? We were with a comrade in Puna. We saw big fields of solar panels and also in Jujuy. When you, when you see why that's an panel. In France, Canfeng and in Salta, sorry, Eramet, in France, and Ganfeng in Salta use or want to use solar panels. For what? To extract lithium. And what does this mean? What benefits? For what and for who? For what and for who do we establish this project that is predatory in Argentina? But in my eyes, shared also by Chile and Bolivia. So maybe the Chilean comrade will correct me on this. There are three groups internationally that are promoting predation. I want to stop in this. One of the biggest groups, the financial groups, the speculation groups. That's why I refuse sometimes when they say, well, the production Oh, there is a, an issue. JP Morgan, 
HSBC. BlackRock, very well known with the debt, and also I, YPF shareholders, and also one of the biggest and Vanguard group. Today, they are the engines of this depredation. Also, another key point, you're writing with your cell phone with lithium batteries, so you can calculate a car battery, 19,000 cell phones, around that. 80% of Argentine exports goes to lithium batteries of expensive cars in Europe, in the US, in Korea, in China. So when they talk about who, where does this go, lithium can be used for medicine, don't say foolishness. And also with transport, but it's very important that we give the discussion because they can say anything. The third point is also the mining companies. Lithium is one chapter in the horrific uh, history of mining companies. There is a nefarious group. The second group is car companies who have companies like Toyota in Japan. And the second group is, which is key, these first world countries that have a green flag. Nowadays, the big company of transport is Volkswagen. Volkswagen is not only one of the biggest companies that em emit greenhouse gases, but also is a shareholder in lithium companies. We have to understand this, like BMW. They are the second largest group, car companies. Energy, energy transition is going to, it goes by hand, by hand by car companies. They haven't sold as many cars as they do now. Even after Volkswagen Gate, they have record sales. They have a big role. And now the third group, mining companies, obviously. Many companies from different flags, from China, Australia, the United States, and France, Fosco from Korea. They are different ones. But the logic is, is the same. The logic is the same. Among all the techniques of destruction, I will not give that discussion. I don't think that which technique is, is a good discussion. Among all the techniques, they always choose the cheapest one. I bring the water out of the, I mix water with sweet water with salty water, and I put water from the rivers as they need it. Pure predation in our continent. You know, estimates of the lithium extraction are millions and millions of water. You get lost with the calculations. Our soft flats as ecosystem, as a place of, of life for the communities, they have like 20 or 30 years left. People who come from ecology, in 20 or 30 years, there won't be any soft flats left. We are seeing the destruction of one of the life places. Another point is with the climate crisis. Climate crisis is also a topic we have to dismantle as militants. That's why I thank this space. I was called yesterday by a radio. So climate crisis, we die and they laugh. The truth is as this speech you saw yesterday that there was a historic record of temperature. That speech immobilizes us, it stops us, and in some place, it lies. 
is it true that we don't have nothing left to do? Greenhouse gases are true. The level of depredation is true. But it is not true that we don't have nothing to do. It is not true that climate crisis has only to do with that measure of temperature. Climate crisis has a lot to do with inequality, ecological inequalities. Climate crisis has to do with social inequality. It is not casual that we have all those records of inequality. We have to understand that we are in one of the most unequal continents in the world. One of the continents that is offering the most alternatives for the world to stop this climate crisis. It is connected. The climate crisis is connected with a demographic process. Argentina has over 90% of people in urban areas in a country where there, there was an agrarian reform. Those numbers are increasing. They had a lot to do with environmental destruction. We have records of deforestation. How can, cannot we connect deforestation with climate crisis? In Argentina, they passed the law that everything that was burned can be used for agriculture and livestock. It is a, an extractivist agriculture. Argentina is amongst the 10 countries that deforest the most. In El Impenetrable, in one of the places that was burned, that announced after the fires, said that it was going to further the places to, to cultivate. So don't lie. As a militant, we have to get involved in this. How can we discuss climate, climate crisis if we don't dis discuss pollution, chemical pollution, with the predatory ways of the agribusiness? How cannot we discuss the objectification and the logic of extractivism? You don't produce where you live and you don't live where you produce. Thank you again. We have to run. We have to move all of this, they say, in this campaign, this campaign of big candidates, and you don't know, you don't really know what they're saying, and keep the discussion. As someone said in Delgara, here we have to have the primary discussion. Let's say lithium factory or Australian company or American company. YPF or Lienz. We have to discuss yes or no. Yes or no. What is this about? And what discussion do we have? If you're giving us options, we can give you options. Lithium goes to transport. Let's discuss polytransport. I don't want an European to have an expensive car. I want an European to travel in public transport. I don't want Argentina transport its food within regions. I want to discuss the train, not trucks, and I discuss geopolitical. Why does a pair have to be exported to all over the world? If the point is my cell phone, let's discuss the obsolescence. Let's discuss why my cell phone is programmed to be obsolete in a few years because it is a very partial discussion otherwise. We have to discuss a way of producing things. Why do we discuss that consume has to be global and not local and regional? In what moment did I consider that we had to eat kiwi from New Zealand or tomatoes in winter? I'm talking seriously. Let's discuss this topic seriously is key. And the link between environmental movement and leftist movements, human rights, indigenous peoples, workers' movement, and ecofeminism. It is key because we have to 
take the discussion to those places because otherwise we will stay in the surface and deep inside what we have to discuss is democracy what the what do these projects of extractivism mean because they don't they never ask you do you want it do you want it with information do you want it because they look for it i came back from the pony a month ago the first anecdotes of why you understood us public questions they invited young people to these public questions you know candidates from big parties she said yes my community agrees with this and the community doesn't know what to do we have to discuss democracy in Argentina, we are living 40 years of democracy. This democracy is key. I also said it in the session after the Dario Maxi assassination. This extractivism we have is not from the dictatorship, it's from the democracy, of this democracy. It's key that we understand it. Many of the discussions, like in Chubut, have to do with judicial prosecutions one of the icons of our democracy. Public questions are key of democracy. We have to discuss what democracy we have, and we have to discuss extractivism. And I finish with this point, this idea. We have to stop discussing what they are making us discuss. We have to discuss if we want, if we think we need, if we wish that in Latin America, is at the service of global market or if Latin America has to choose its own path. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillermo Folguera. And to continue after the words of Guise, we are going to the next speaker. Let me tell you before that this panel and also the simultaneous there are participants from different countries, people from Colombia, Chile, Turkey, the United States. I see from different places of the country, as you see in the pictures, there are meetings with screens. Collectively, they are following this event from the North area, from Buenos Aires, in La Boca, and also different parts of the country. To continue, we are asking Camilo, Camilo Parada, referent of the anti-capitalist movement in Chile. Camilo is also uh, an activist of the human rights movement in his country. Camilo, go ahead. Hello, Mariano, comrades. I'm going to turn off my camera because, I mean, uh, I don't have a lot of signal on the Pacific coast. There is not much signal, so I'm going to turn off the camera so it can be more fluid. You don't miss a lot. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Greetings, Mariano, Guillermo, the comrades that are present in this forum. Before beginning my presentation, I want to make a short point of recognition to the ISL, who put from the beginning the eco-social issues as one of the key factors of the struggle against capitalism. Ecocide, we are seeing now, does not know any borders. And we are in a border in a as it was expressed by Guillermo previously by the hands of a minority who wants to make profit for them without caring about the social majorities and the basic needs of the peoples, for example, with lithium, without caring about the consequences to the environment. 
we have to congratulate us, the militant work of the ISL and its sections around the world who fight to turn this system around and who called for this forum. And I also want to, before starting my presentation, to send a revolutionary greet to the people in Jujuy for the struggle. They are, it is also our struggle, and it's very important for this panel. To begin my presentation, this has to do with lithium in a way it has to do with oil dependence, with the strategy of development of lithium by capitalism has to do with the, the goal of the end of the reservoirs of oil. As Guillermo was saying, the biggest consumers in the lithium industry are the, the car companies who are the same who push the oil industry. The presentation I'm going to make has this structure, a brief explanation of what is lithium inside Chile, Chile's geology, some history, and also the environmental issues. Destructivist policies of Boris governments who continues the previous governments of sectors of the right you know, we have reformist governments of the ex-concertacion and this government of Boric presenting a national strategy of lithium. So we're talking about the, the consequences and what way out we need the people, the workers, the revolutionaries in the face of this greenwashing that they propose. You know, governments like Gabriel Boric who call themselves ecologists and are very tricky. So to begin with, we have we can talk about the history. Lithium is a light metal that is very reactive, which is very important for modern society, as the converse said, to use in batteries, rechargeable batteries for electronic devices and vehicles. Chile is known as one of the main producers of lithium in the world, behind Australia followed by Argentina and Bolivia. Both Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina have shared this lithium triangle. It is in a region full of salt flats that is very dry. There is a water crisis that is very severe. In Chile, this reservoir is in the salt flat of Atacama, in the Atacama Desert, which is the driest desert in the world. Also, be signed to use it for to store energy. Can use it for the pharmaceutical industry. The history of lithium in Chile is goes back to the 60s. The geological Anaconda Cooper, the company, they were the owners. Um, they were the perpetrators of the coup and owner before the nationalization of the mining of Ichukichamata, the biggest exploitation project they discovered reservoirs, and they saw that they have high concentrations of lithium. And this is in Atacama, in Antofagasta, which is a very fragile ecosystem, and this marks the development of the mining of lithium in a global context. You know, the atomic bomb is being developed and also by the USSR after World War II and during the Cold War and where people thought that lithium could be used for the production of nuclear arsenal to produce tritium as uranium and other this didn't prosper, luckily, but the interest of the companies was focused on lithium 
for the arms industry. During the dictatorship, the mineral is declared national interest mineral. There was a decree in 1979, also for copper, which was nationalized by Allende. Lithium was not was not in the outlook for by the state. It's only by the 1979 the state. Let's remember that we are under a military regime that is very capitalist and applies neoliberal recipes of the Chica Boys. The state reserves the expedition of lithium reservoirs, except for some agreements they have with companies. This exception is going to be the norm. In 1980, it was constituted the Chilean Society of Lithium as a mixed company between Foods Minerals Company, owner of 55% of the capital, and owner of Corfo, a corporation. And Corfo is the corporation of for production, which is 40% of the share. The N is the exploitation of lithium in this, in this salt flat in Atacama in the 60s through, as Guillermo was explaining, the extraction of evaporation, which is the most ecocidal method to exist. This method needs big quantities of water. We are in the middle of the desert. Parallel in the 1980s, the constitution of the 80s was imposed. That is still It ratifies the reality of the decisions, establishing that only the president of the Republic, Pinochet, can do it through the emanation of the Supreme Decree. In 1983, three years after, there is a mining code reaffirms that lithium cannot be conceded except for the, by the degree of the detector. 55% is owned by the big companies. When the Pinochet dictatorship ends and negotiates with that people on the table to the transition or to democracy, through this pact of impunity and continuity of the neoliberal model and the nature of the state as a subsidiary, starts to give in to the pressure of the multinationals, and that is in 1985, a contract is signed to open the way to SQM, a privatized company. It was practically given away by the dictatorship to its son-in-law, Julio Ponce, owner to this day of this company. And in the last century was a very important company. We know in Chile the workers' movement struggles. There's a song that talks about this, and of the killings by the state of the workers. With this said, in the dictatorship, Sukimik, it becomes a, an empire. The government gives them the control of the salt flat of Atacama when Pinochet's son-in-law had the power of over Corfo. Nowadays, 39% of the income of Sokimik come from the extraction of lithium in Atacama. And also the company has financed illegally parties of the government parliamentary parties from the far right to the ex-concertacion, they have been financed by Sokimik. In this context, we reach our days in the 21st century, in 2014, 
and during the first months of the second government of Michel Bachelet, of the Escorts Nación, was they created a national committee of lithium that elaborated an inform a report of lithium and was finalized in 2015. In 2016, Bachelet, president of the new of Chile, of the new majority, es concertación, an electoral framework that goes from different parties, launches a national policy of lithium as a way to think a, a state development for the production of batteries and the pharmaceutical industry. And in that same year, the legislature created a special committee in relation to processing lithium and export of lithium and decides to analyze the contracts between Corfo and SQM, Sokimic, for this branch. It is important to highlight that all of this didn't advance in this. So Sokimic continued with the monopoly of lithium exploitation. In parallel to this history, the people that inhabit the territories and the environmental organizations start to, in the 2000s, to raise the voice against extraction of lithium in the salt flats due to the great issues to the environment. Exploitation of this mineral requires, as we said, big quantities of water, which led to the exploitation of aquifers and the reduction of the soft flats. There is a very parallel history between Argentina and Chile with companies that operate in both sides of the, of the borders. The soft flats have a life expectancy. If we continue to exploit them in this way, they have 50 years left. That's a tax flora, the fauna, and also for the peoples who live in those territories. These ecosystems of the Andean ecosystem, they push them to disappearance. And also the chemical destruction of lithium, apart from evaporation, causes the pollution of the soil. And this stays in the aquifers and on the soil for years. Gabriel Boric, the current president of Chile, from Frente Aplio, a coalition that goes from liberals, excursionistas, the Communist Party, proposed recently, very recently, a national strategy for lithium that seeks to boost a greater participation of the state in the exploitation of this resource, but without nationalization of the common resource, and with a focus based on the collaboration between the public and the private to promote internationalization of lithium in the country with the promise of more distribution of lithium, opening the way for new national actors like Garcia Linera in Bolivia and destruction of the jungle, and also progressivism giving into capitalism in Argentina, Brazil, in the 21st century, who haven't done more than deepen the issue of lithium, giving away projects, doing concessions to corporations and multinationals of mega mining. The predatory projects of reformism, extractivism, we have to say, it has to be an axis of militancy, being reformist or far right is ecocidal. The strategy of the Frente Amplio, we have to add to access more. This government didn't retire the, the vote in the parliament of the International Accord of TPP-11. The practice was approved. So they allowed multinationals and corporations to continue destroying 
and also this government authorized the exploitation of bronze by the companies Anglo-American, PLC, Kodesko Mitsui, Mitsubishi, and also we can add the green hydrogen in the Patagonia. They are also, they are building a port in San Antonio, which are also approved. And this goes into contradiction. And I think that defines this Latin American reformism, this greenwashing, because we have to remember that the government of Gabriel Boric defines itself as ecologists, which is very important. It's based on promises and led to greenwashing. They put themselves at the service of capitalism, as we have denounced systematically from the anti-capitalist movement. In the end, this wave of progressive governments with the participation of communist parties that have nothing of communist, only the name, they follow the way of the markets, of the big capitalists, the IMF, the World Bank, and extractivism. Lithium extraction in the salt flats of Chile is a uh, ecocide due to the negative impacts, the annihilation, the annihilation of the and also exploitation of water in a water crisis and the chemical pollution that comes from the extraction process that attacks biodiversity. The extraction of lithium, like in Argentina, violates the local communities. And in practice, there is no participation of the peoples in the decision making. And also the profits in every case in any case, goes to these to these peoples. They don't have access to drinkable water. They don't have access to electricity, the same electricity that they that they say they're going to promote. So this, in the end, is not useful for any development, like in the south of Chile, in the Mapuche territory, like in the desert, the industry of copper like in the south corner, leaf extraction violates rights of the communities, destroys its resources, and in practice, there is no participation. These are flats that we have indigenous territories. We need to consult the communities. Our revolutionary struggle has to create those uh, bridges the struggle of the indigenous communities. We have to support their, we have to defend their rights to decision-making. We have to stop deforestation, extraction of lithium. Destruction is also linked to our global struggle against the system as a whole. The intense attraction of natural resources of common goods like lithium, copper, and other elements is promoted by a logic of accumulation. They don't care about the impact on the environment and also on society on the long term or the short term. We have to organize and struggle against these projects together with a proposal of alternative. The discussion is about the system. It's about the decision of how, how much do, do we produce? And that decision has to be made by the majorities, by the workers, those who are of us who produce the wealth and also the peoples of the world. All the movements and organizations that have been this struggle for years and not by the minority and its representatives in this bourgeois democracy response of the far right or of the center left. Our struggle has to be to turn everything around. We have to have an eco-socialist transition to this current economic model that has something to do with this progressive 
governments. The party of Borix defines itself as eco-socialist and participates in a project that destroys the conditions for life in, on Earth. It militarizes the territories and there is a res repressive legal framework that leads to new social uprisings. It is the capitalist agenda and the, and the agenda of the right. That eco-socialism of paper has nothing to do with us, with socialism or the agenda for change. Our eco-socialism has to be deeply anti-capitalist. There is no other chance. We need a, a deep change in the way that production is carried out. This is against the system itself. There is no environmental struggle without structure with a capitalist. Chile has one of the biggest reservoirs of lithium. The exploitation of the methyl causes environmental issues. The strategy proposed by the government of Gabriel Boric promotes state participation, but also opens the way for multinationals. This has to do with our struggle against the capitalist system. With a radical ecology, we had to propose a necessary alternative to ecocide. For us, from the anti-capitalist movement, eco-socialism is a key axis for militancy, not only for the need against collapse, but also a tool for construction for the youth, for the working class, who is more conscious of the negativity related to the ecocide industry. In that sense, we believe that it is very important a coordination of Latin America Listening to Guillermo, I think that we have to promote a coordination of the countries of Latin America in relation to the ecocidal extraction, because lithium is extracted on both sides of the waters. Our response has to be international and coordinated. The working class is one and without borders. And also, uh, revolutionary socialism has to be. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, Camilo. Thank you, thank you. With Camilo, we complete the exposition of the planet panel. So, so now we have to socialize some of the comrades and some questions. So Guillermo and Camilo can talk about them, reflect, answer, like Interlow, like Guillermo said, the reasons from Nuken also, and the questions are in relation to the lithium, like Yana Carolina. They say that, what do you think about the way out of lithium? Their exploitation is harmful. Ian asks if nationalization by itself is a way out. Then there's a question about Kukui, the rebellion. How do you consider that as that a community uprise and also the legal appropriation of common resources, in what way can we use that rebellion in an anti-extractivist sense? There is also a question in regards to which is the role of social organizations in the process of mobilization in Jujuy. And the relationship with indigenous communities, you know, between 
social organizations, indigenous communities, and the leftist organizations. What else? There is a question about lithium and the transition since extraction of lithium is at the service of car companies' profits, like Guillermo said, lithium, can lithium become a social need for energy storage? Yen is making several questions. He is like a spokesperson of the youth of UBA, who is uh, all together. He's like a delegate from Cordoba. There are two questions. Lithium, lithium. It is the main thing. How much of a necessity is it for real progress? Is there a non-polluting way of lithium extraction? Not only of the youth, also the eco-socialist network is there in, in our cultural center. For now, those ones. One more. Is there an alternative of transition that doesn't require touching lithium? And Awel, Awel from the La Rebeldia Collective, ask, what do you think of the debate between nationalization or foreign extraction. What do you know about Mercorot, the, the company from Israel? From Mendoza, they ask for Chile. the organization of mine workers. And from the youth of the North, they ask also for Chile, is there a level of organization and social response in Chile to lithium extraction and destruction of by the mining companies. One more from Colombia. Juan. Juan, comrade. What opinion do you have in regards to the proposal of economic uh, to grow? For now, those. If there are more, we can do a second round. We can start in the same order. Gisha, you can start if you want to answer. Let me activate it. I will do what I can. There are many questions and very interesting interventions. Thank you for the possibility of meeting Camilo. And also I thank the invitation and in particular Jesse and Mariano because I don't belong to the movement, to the party, but you trust me, you think that I can make contributions. It is very important for me. Some things that I wrote down, Camilo can add a little bit on this. The first point in regards to lithium, I started I had militancy in human rights. My parents were exiled from Chile. My brothers are from Chile. My militancy was the typical daughter, son of exiles. I saw the expansion of soy. 
we have to get involved in this. And that's where I got into this group. In that context, I remember there were some of the discussions. What so is going to create? 20 years now from, from that place, we are not in that moment. We are not like in 2002. We're in the chance of seeing what extractivism, extractivism 2.0, destructivism has already generated. Because it seems like we, they force us to start all over again. Lithium can generate, you can see what can lithium generate. Catamarca, Antofagasta, like I was saying, a school that doesn't have gas during the morning. Live and science everywhere saying that they're going to improve the hospital, the municipal hotel, there, are, there is no electricity at night. The plants in a... No one goes to the, to the parks. And there are police at the park because we also uh, got a flat tire. We, we passed eight times in that corner and eight times they stopped us and they asked for our documentation. Don't tell us what will happen. What is going to happen is that we have inequality, foreign exploitation, houses that are falling apart. And we have children of geologists who go to, to serve these companies. I think that is key to understand this. Sometimes they present, they present me as a philosopher. The only thing that I did was to take a bus and go there. We have to do that and we have to support the communities. I said Catamarca and in Jujuy, it is the same. It is not worse or better. It is the same because the project is regional. As it was clear in Camilo's intervention, the project is regional. There is a point. I don't want you to take it badly but as a, as a challenge. We have to work with coordinates. You have to work about the local. The local seems like little to us, but the local is something big for us. It is a lot that a, a community rebels and organizes. We say it with a very big embrace and also the embrace and the question about the national. I also want a project for the country. I want a project for the country. What is the national? We have to discuss the YPF. We have to discuss the lithium, the YPF with agro. We have to discuss YPF offshore, which is linked to the, to the giveaway in the sea the Phoenix project here in Terra del Fuego for Paratotal. YPF is one of the biggest, has, has one of the shareholders, BlackRock, and we pay five millions. What is YPF that pays five millions to a CEO for being, you know that I try to avoid small corruption, like in Carrió. Why do we pay five million to the former CEO of YPF? Is that national? Don't play with me. The other point of the national is that it is something very delicate. Some groups and some people, they race. I have to be careful big part of the, of the legal institutional framework was made by the nefarious governments of Carlos Olmenel. 
they were in charge of not letting anyone dismantle it. Groups like information, they put it as, as a first thing. I don't know. I don't know if, if it's very different between the Hufas and Morales. Sorry, I don't know if the axis is that. The, the thing is for who and for what. I don't know if Morales has to handle it or, or the pink house. There has to be another discussion. And I finish with this. The environmental movement has a problem. And I know that I'm talking to 90 people and more. Leftist. And I consider that my comrades, the environmental movement has a characteristic that I know that it is very fragmented. I went to a meeting of fumigated people. Fragmentation for us is a very big problem. But also fragmentation can be a good thing. You know what the good thing is? Is that the environmental movement was not uh, co-opted by the government. I know it because it makes people uncomfortable. And fragmentation leads to another thing, which is a very big problem that was not for people who was not formed politically. That is, it is very hard to work it plurally. What does this mean? It is hard. Every time I say plurinational, no one put, no one for me for plurinational. It is a horrific political moment, but it is very interesting. We have to apply a lot of imagination, a lot of meeting with comrades, walk in the streets, guitar and wine. We have to think collectively, how do we continue? And the last thing, and I finish, and then Camilo can speak. We talk about uh, energy transition. We're seeing the effects. The only thing that this is going to bring is the degradation of life. You know that this is not an insult. What do we need to change? The energy of the world. The energy of the world. We want to change the source of energy. If we want to change the source of energy, let them do it. Let them figure out how to keep their profit rate. I want to change the world personally. All yours, Camilo. Thank you, Guillermo. Camilo, you want to pick up some questions? Yes. Thank you. There are several questions. I don't know if I can answer them all. There is one question in regards to the organization of workers, of the mine workers, copper, lithium. Honestly, workers of copper in, in Chile, they are in a way an aristocracy of the workers, the conflicts of the copper industry are closed with, with bonds, and also by the CTC, which is one of the federations of coppers, led by Christian Cuevas, a presidential candidate by the, by the left, the Communist Party. There have been some criticism in regards to privatization of lithium. But this defense, they don't pick up the environmental issues, the ecocides, the subject of property, but it doesn't tackle the issue 
as a whole. And deep inside, it connects with the question made in regards to the notion of progress. And I think that it is one of the questions that we had to make. You know, the revolutionaries, we have to make that question. It has to do, and it is connected to the growth. And in a way, uh, a century ago, it was tackled the thinker Walter Benjamin, he made a criticism from the left to the notion of progress, which in the 20th century was associated with the proposals of socialism. And what Benjamin says are two things. History is not a line, it's not an arrow. You cannot project it from point A to point B, but moves forwards with breaks and sometimes goes back. And the notion of progress, of objective improvements, the notion has to learn a progress that seem to be technological and also in production. That seemed to be progress, but meant a setback that had negative effects. That meant a setback for the great majorities, like the arms industry, in the end, they are against the interests of maximization of capital, and that don't bring more rights for communities, for the workers, and more concern for ecological balance. And the notion of progress has to do with the defense of possibilism in Latin America, like in Bolivia, of Evo Morales, and I think of Venezuela, I think in Chile, like deep inside, they defend certain strategies of extractivism in the jungle, in the desert, in regards to water, natural resources, common goods, with the argument of development of those productive forces. They say that they're going to bring a better distribution of wealth, but in reality, that industry is ecocide and extractivist. And what it brings is, is death and annihilation of communities, a water crisis, the advance of the the advance of capitalism and destruction, and we don't want that progress. We need to fight, and we have to question and challenge in that framework of concepts that capitalism puts. We have to fight for our own concepts. We have to make our own theory from the basis of the working class. We cannot answer all the time the notions that the bourgeoisie puts in front of us. We had to think about post-capitalism because otherwise we won't get anywhere. And in that sense, the topic of the growth, I think that we have to propose this, not so much in, in terms of growth or degrowth, obviously the working class, needs the development of the productive forces in its wealth to ensure rights for society and environmental rights for the great majorities, but also it needs to be within the framework of an eco-socialist perspective, a perspective that respects balance of the environment beyond nationalization, that is necessary of common resources, what we need is to end once and for all the interproductive matrix that is polluting. We have to nationalize common resources like water in Chile, but also in parallel, we have to have our proposal and professionally elaborate with the workers with continuity 
you know, worker conversion, we have a big challenge. It is not only to fight against capitalism for a transition, but like Guillermo was saying, with transport, lithium, for example, which has been developed in regards to the card industry, deep inside is being pushed by the same industry. And that stops the development of public transportation and promotes and the promotion to stop using private transport as a means of transport and also stops the development of the train industry to transport products and people in the territories in Chile train the train was dismantled by pressures of the truck drivers, the truck industry, which was financed by the CIA to commit the coup. And they paralyze the country when there are certain push to go back to the train, to have to remove certain subsidies in regards to oil. The truck union in Chile is very strong. So I think that on the one side, we have to repropose, rediscuss with our conceptions and to, to recreate these concepts. We have to speak in our own language. In that, in that sense, the law for environmental crisis has to go through a democratization of socialist democratization. We are the peoples, we are the territories who need to decide this. Like here in the, in the coast, where I'm at, there is a Quintero Puncho Cabi, an area where there is an industry an industrial development, which is horrific for natural gas. And that is a sacrifice area with cancer rates. Schools have to be closed several times a year. Sea biodiversity has been destroyed for the increase of temperature, and that reality is going to be spread in different territories. That's what the system offers. And going back to the original question, how do we stand from the International Socialist League and also all the organizations who are worried about this crisis? It has to be with anti-capitalist organization. There is no way out within the system in which we are now, the rationality, the structure of capital, which is a structure that is based on looting, accumulation, and consume, which is pushed also by advertising. So we have to create a different system. There is no way out. changing the, the structure or changing the while there is a system of production and consume with obsolescence with private transport buying, buying products that are pro produced thousands of miles away. We have no way of stopping this stopping the ecocide in which we are now and which takes big steps. The natural catastrophes associated to the means of production have been accelerated in the last few years and are very impressive. In Chile, we had regularly, we have fires in the forest and during the winter, we have floods. It is a vicious cycle, and that cycle, the only way to break it is to break 
the logic of the system to break it with a revolution, then even though it has to come from the local, the local struggles, and we have to think what type of country we want, it has to be an international revolution because the system is international. I hope I was able to answer some of the questions. If there's anything left. I can hear it. Camilo, estabas, estabas cerrando. Si querés terminar. Camilo, you're closing. So if you want to finish. I just hope I was able to answer the questions that they made. I think it's hard to answer each one of them, but to conclude, I want to insist on this. We have to come out of this forum with proposals and with work internationally, and also specifically with eco-socialism and the struggle of the eco-socialist struggle in Chile, in Argentina, in Brazil, in our territories of Latin America, with a proposal of coordination in the short term, so we can carry out joint actions. Thank you, Camilo. Thank you, Guillermo. Thank you, everyone who are participating. I just want to say that we have one panel left. One of the participants was asking, the thing is to, to discuss it in the closing panel. So it's going to be in half an hour. So you can take some fresh air and recover. So you can concentrate again in that panel to try to synthesize before being late and close those debates in regards to the transition to post-capitalism and socialism, taking things that were said here as a proposal. This is going to be at 4 p.m. in half an hour, in one hour and a half.